Hey people, welcome back to the Revival on the Air Today podcast. Before we get into the show today, I wanted just a big shout out to all of the listeners. There's been a, a great response so far to the podcast. In fact, in Australia, uh, we've had uh, quite a number of uh, downloads, but we've also uh, had some from overseas. So uh, thanks to those in the US and in Finland and in New Zealand and in the UK and in Japan and in the Netherlands, our reach is uh, getting out there. So thanks, uh, thanks listeners, for uh, subscribing to the podcast. My guest today is Ryan. Hey, how are you? Good, bud. How are you doing? I'm not too bad, thank you. Thanks for joining. That's all right. <laughs> I apologise now to all the listeners around the world if you felt <laughs> if I disappoint you with this podcast. Well, you know it's not about you, right? I know that's hard to I know that's hard to believe. This is about what what God's done in your life. That's right. Not a, it's, this is not the this is not the Ryan show. That's good. I'm glad. <laughs> Otherwise, people would have switched off already. It's the shortest podcast ever. So I've had a few guests on the podcast so far who've had quite transformational journeys. So they've had a pretty tough life out in the world before they've come to know God. But your experience is probably not dissimilar to mine in that uh, either our parents came when we were not born young or you know when we were when we were little tackers uh, and that's uh, that's sort of where your journey starts doesn't it it does that's correct my parents came along when i was probably 6 months old um maybe maybe younger i'm not not exactly sure but i can't, uh, can't remember back that far no i can't remember <laughs> But apparently a lot of people changed my nappies. That's what they tell me. I used to change your nappy when I was you were a kid. But I don't is know. Because you have... Anyway, let's not go there. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Where, would you like me to st- Where would you like me to start? So so how did your parents come to uh, to know God? What was okay. the story? Cool. Right, so my um, the story really goes back way before I was born. Um, my parents were living in the UK... Um, Which is where your accent comes from? Yes. Do you so, think you still have an accent? Depends on how uh, excited I get. All oh, right, okay. So the accent comes out more when you're more yeah, excited? Yeah, when I'm more excited, it becomes way more English. You know what I'm saying? Is, but, that, is that when you're watching football? <laughs> depends who's playing. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> how, long have, how long have you been back in Australia? Uh, 19 years. I so, think that's when I first met you. Yeah, it was. So, yeah, we arrived back here in... January 98, we came back. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. To 90 years. That's all right. Yes, yeah, so my parents were living in England. Um, my That had my older brother, Greg, and they had a sister of mine. Uh, her name was Sarah. And um, my dad uh, is Irish, has there, an Irish background. There is another brother, isn't there? There is, but we, we don't, we don't he talk doesn't about, feature in the story yet. We don't talk about him, do no, we? But we will, maybe later. So you're the youngest of the three brothers, aren't you? I am, yes, that's correct. So anyway, so... You are, my... you are the nicest of the three. <laughs> that's don't, true. don't tell him I said that, because no, yeah. I know the ball, but you're definitely the nicest of oh, the brothers. Thanks, thanks Ben. All right, good. Yeah, so anyway, my dad was from an Irish Catholic family, and my mum uh, from a Catholic family as well. Um... But my dad had decided that his children would not be brought up with a religion, that they would learn to find God for themselves when they were older. That was his plan. Um, So he had my brother christened because he was the oldest and the family pressure, but he refused to get my uh, sister christened. Um, So when she was around about six months, maybe a little bit older, she... um, she got sick and uh, she went to hospital and she died. So, um, which was very tragic Mm. um, for my parents. But um, my mum went to the Catholic priest at the time and said, look, uh, what's going to happen to her? She's she's not been christened into the Catholic faith. And he told her that uh, she'd go to a place called Limbo, which is a place between heaven and hell, like purgatory, where you'd never see God, but you'd never see hell either. So she took that and away she went. And a couple of months later, the Pope announced there was no such place as Limbo anymore. So she went back to the the priest and said, what's going to happen to her? And he said, look, until I get confirmation from Rome, I can't tell you otherwise. And gave her a, a tot of gin and sent her on her way. And that was 
the uh, the answer from the church at the time. Far out. Really? Wow. Yeah. So um, as a result of that, my parents decided to start a new life and um, my mum's auntie lived in New Zealand. So they decided to go... Uh, moved to New Zealand into Christchurch, um, but on the way they they sailed from Singapore to to South Australia and they arrived in South Australia. And fortunately for me, uh, no offence to New Zealand listeners, um, they decided to stay in South Australia. Um, so they changed changed their plans. They came here to South Australia, and while um, my mum was pregnant with my brother. Tony, who uh, was born um, in in seventy four, so uh, and then in seventy five I was born. So um, the uh, my mum couldn't go into labour naturally; she was induced, and there was a bit of a complication in the date that I was actually due. So um, they induced my mother and. I actually apparently set a South Australian record, an Australian record of the longest labour. Um, apparently it was seven days my mum was in labour for me. <laughs> so, true story. So, yeah, so I said... There's a few lines there. Yeah. <laughs> How about we use the one, you were worth the wait. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I often say I was a pain even back then. But um, So anyway, I was, I was born... Um, it turns out that I was actually a month early, so oh, right. um, so I don't know how they got the dates wrong, but that's another story maybe for off air. And um, uh, I was I was a quite sickly child when I was born. Um, I had jaundice, and uh, but uh, as I grew, I had uh, lung deficiencies. So I had uh, pneumonia three times inside the first year of my life. Um, and I, my nickname as I was younger was the Happy Weezer because because um, I had so many problems with my lungs and so forth that uh, I used to just sit and, and wheeze. But I was a happy Weezer, like the penguin on Toy Story. Yeah, just like the penguin <laughs> on, on, on Toy Story. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, I get I got my squeaker back. Anyway, um, it was one day my dad was at work and. He, a guy at work spoke to him and, said, and told him that he'd gone to church to check up on his wife to make sure that she wasn't getting involved in some crazy cult thing. And um, anyway, he spoke to my f- father and my dad said to him, he said, look, he said, you um, should speak to my wife. She's a religious one. I, he wasn't really that interested. So he arranged for a couple of... Uh, people to come around to our house to speak to my mother. Now, at the time, she had been in bed for six weeks with kidney uh, problems after, as a result of me being born. Um, so anyway, they came and they spoke to her, uh, sat at the end of her bed and spoke to her about God. And uh, she actually remembered when she was in confirmation as a child that they said to her, you received the Holy Spirit. And she always thought there was something more to it. And uh, what they said to her really sort of uh, struck a chord with her and she was really excited about it. But uh, after they finished speaking, after they left, she actually got up out of bed and was instantly healed and, and was able to make dinner and she hadn't been able to do that for six weeks. Wow. So cool, yeah. So, um, so she they went to their first meeting on the Sunday, um, and my mum uh, was baptized and received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues the first meeting that she went to. My dad often says that if anyone else had done it, he would have thought it was some sort of sideshow or or whatever. But um, he he saw it was true, saw the change in my mum. And he was baptised shortly afterwards, um, but he struggled to receive the Holy Spirit. And he would they, would, they would pray together at night and they would pray, pray by the bedside and he would, he would get really upset because my mum could speak in tongues and he couldn't. 
and so he used to go down onto the couch and sort of sleep on the couch in a huff because he hadn't received the Holy Spirit and uh, that went on for a, for, a, for a good couple of months um, and to one morning um, I was I was sick and my my parents had a card that they showed the doctors and I was was rushed into an oxygen tent to help me breathe in the hospital. So uh, they'll go. My mum was going through the motions, packing the nappies, packing the clothes, and so forth. And she said to my dad, she said, "Look, why don't we pray for him?" My dad said, "I haven't got the Holy Spirit. I can't pray." So, so what was the oxygen? So you were in hospital at this time. Yeah. Time, so you? when I couldn't breathe properly, they'd yeah. take me to the hospital and I'd go into a crib or whatever it is and be able to help me breathe. Yeah. Sort of. Uh, breathe better so just on oxygen so had they diagnosed what was wrong with your lungs what was well they were giving me sweat tests and so forth for cystic fibrosis and that's what they were alluding to what it was yeah um they they believed that i wouldn't have full sort of lung capacity or or health capacity as i grew older that it would get worse and so forth really wow um yeah so it i guess uh, you take things for granted sometimes when you uh, <laughs> when you think, oh yeah, that's what I should have been like, but I'm not like that. Mm. So the suspicions were that uh, I had cystic fibrosis. Um, it was never actually confirmed or anything like that. And so, how old were you at this stage? Uh, just under one yeah, at right. the time. Wow. So um, there must have been nothing more distressing as a parent seeing your kid rushed into hospital and being put in an o- in- into an oxygen tent. Yeah, I think they. I think you just get used to the motions of it. Um, you know, I remember as I was older that uh, they used to do a cupping thing on, on, on my back to relieve the mucus and so mm. forth, and, and that was, you know, what they were taught to do and and so forth. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, I think after a while you just get used to it. Like I said, they called me the happy weezer because mm. that's what I did. I sat there and wheezed mm. and sort of... Um, you know, just just live with what whatever it was. Yeah. So yeah, on this morning, they, um, my mum said, "Look, why don't we pray for him?" My dad said, "I haven't got the Holy Spirit. I can't pray for him." And uh, my mum told him that any prayer asked in faith, that God would answer. And uh, with that, he put his hands on my head, and asked God to heal his son. And I was instantly healed, and he received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues at the same time. Whoa. Yeah. So it's still like That's amazing. Uh, to this day, it just you know it. Growing up, hearing this story and so forth, it still just blows me away. The 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 timing. Mm. Um, I think my father, like most men, um, they love to do things in their own strength. That's like, who we are. That's how yeah. we, that's how we're built, right? We're built to so, get on with stuff and fix stuff and yeah. do stuff. That's how we. So, that's how we're engineered. So I see it that you know it was a time where he was no longer just trying he was just asking god to heal his son and yeah. i was, and i was instantly healed yeah and uh and he was filled with the holy spirit and because he he'd broken down that barrier i yeah. measure between it so yeah so yeah so that was an amazing um amazing thing um as we grew up you know i i heard these stories and so forth um my brother tony had meningitis when he was young and he was healed of that um my mum I remember a time my mum heard her back and uh, we had some sisters in the Lord who were over looking after her and they said, oh, be quiet, your mum's sleeping. And 20 minutes later, she was up and she was walking around. She was, she'd was she been instantly healed. They'd prayed for her. Yeah, and, right. and, um, yeah so... That's cool. That's good. So Pretty when amazing. I, so your parents don't live here anymore? They're back no, in they the live, UK? they live in Ireland. Oh, in Ireland? But yeah, to be sure, to be sure. Mm-hmm. Yep, so... A while away. Yeah. <laughs> Far enough away. We don't, say, we don't say that. I'm not saying anything. I met them last... No, was it last year or the year before? Uh, you've met them you, a couple of times, yeah, I think. Yeah. You met them at my, at my brother's wedding. Yeah, that's you right. you met them at my 40th. That's right, yeah. Yeah, 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 so. yeah, yeah. yeah yes. cool. What about, you told me uh, a test me before about uh, your middle brother. Yeah. Tony? Yes. Oh, that he'd been electrocuted. Yeah. That wasn't my fault. Wasn't it? No. <laughs> I don't think so. I think it might be the reason he doesn't like to make cups of tea. I'm not sure, but... Um, Is it the reason why he's a bit wary about you yeah, when yeah. he's around you? He, he, he'd he rather other people make tea. I think this might be the reason why. He, um, 
he was. Uh, he, I think we had a faulty plug or something or other. It probably was broken. Uh, story of our life, <laughs> and um, he touched something that uh, gave him electric shock, and he came running into uh, the lounge room and said, "I've just been electrocuted." And how, how old was he at this? Probably age? seven, I reckon, okay. six yep. or seven. Um, and promptly uh, collapsed on the floor. Oh, wow. And so, as you normally do, you laugh. And, and then, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then it turned from I'm laughter. Gl- I'm glad I didn't grow up with brothers, I'll tell you. <laughs> we, uh, I remember just my parents sort of, you know, the first thing you do is pray, is pray you yep. know, and they're praying in tongues for him and he was, he was fine afterwards and, and so forth. I think, you know, that's what we grew up. Mm. Knowing, you know, that you just you know, pray about it and and things and the, happen, and the and, Lord, and the Lord takes care of yeah, it. Yeah, so it must be really difficult. I think. I mean, we you know, having both of us really grown up knowing, you know, the power of God and having prayer at our disposal for Him to undertake in these circumstances. It must be really difficult for people to grow up and have kids of their own, mm-hmm. not having that. Like it would. And then all the things that happen to kids where we call on the, on the you know, we have prayer mm. and call on the name of the Lord to, to intervene and he miraculously heals them or raises them up. It must be terrifying to be a, t- a parent without that. Oh, I think, I think it, it is, you know. Um, you know, with Elizabeth, she's allergic to peanuts, you know, and uh, we managed to find that out in Sydney a few years ago when, uh, when she was a baby. I fed her peanut butter, so was, that's how good a parent I am. And... Uh, she had an allergic reaction. She just started broke out, broke out in hives, and yeah. and uh, sort of started on a on a chest sort of thing, blotches on her chest, and then it got to her face, and her face swelled up, and her ears were like cabbages, you know. They just wow. And it was it was so scary. And I remember, um, you know, we had to take her to hospital. So we're driving to hospital in Sydney, and and you don't. <laughs> you, you pray, you pray in tongues, you know, and mm. it was just getting worse. You could just see the rash growing by by the second, and um, and she was in distress and crying and so forth, and uh, and just praying, just <coughs> just um, crying out to God, really, mm. like really yelling out to God on the on the way, and uh, we got her to hospital and. Um, and they gave her antihistamine and, and so forth, and they managed to bring her under control, and she had to stay in overnight. And uh, the next day when the um, when the doctor did his rounds, you know, the specialist comes round with all his, his uh, students and so forth, and he said to her, he said, look, he said, did her, did her lips swell and did her tongue swell? And out of everything in her body, they're the only two things that didn't swell. Like her, her ears, like I said, they were yeah. like three times the size, yeah. all down her body. Everything swelled except for those two things, she, you know. And, and then the two things that... Yeah, are the most important things. Mm. You know, there was no swelling in her throat or anything like that. And, you know, over the years, she's... You know, amazing things have happened. We've had... I've cooked with... Again, bad parenting. Uh, I ki- cooked with per- <laughs> uh, peanut oil and... And it had no effect on her at all. And the weird thing is that Judy is the warrior in the family um, and she didn't worry about it at all. And I was checking on her every hour while she was asleep to make sure that nothing was happening and Judy was just fine about it. Um, another time we were in the pl- I was in the play doing Don't Not Know Her and um, Judy was looking after the other kids and someone had her and she comes out and she, this lady comes out and says, oh, your daughter just spat these out in my hand. And they were peanut M and M's, and she goes, "I don't like them." And there was no effect mm, wow, on that. That's cool. Um, and we get her tested every every couple of years, and she's still highly allergic to peanuts. Mm. But those incidents, nothing mm. happened. So mm. amazing stuff. There's a scripture in Mark 16 that talks about you know, the protection of God, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. That the signs that will follow believers, and obviously speaking tongues is one of those, but. But protection from uh, from things like that, yeah, yeah from bad parenting, cool. from protection. I'm not sure it actually <laughs> says bad parenting. I think it, and in fact, I'm not I'm not entirely sure that that is bad parenting. But yeah, uh, anyway. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, yes. it's pretty. I think I think the most one of the most amazing things as a parent is the comfort that comes in circumstances like that. And we've had lots of 
examples in our life where things look, if you look at them from a natural, you know, from with your natural eyes, they look terrible. But just the Holy Spirit just gives you a complete calmness that uh, it's almost like a bubble you know, that sits around you. Uh, it's mm. quite amazing. Now I asked you uh, what your favourite scripture was and you've got something to read for me. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 12. It says, To whom he said, This is the rest, wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Mm. And I just think it just... Jesus is calling out and saying, here it is, this is the rest, this is where it's, it, you're, going, you're going to be refreshed and, and your soul's going to be thing, but but we just do not the hear world, sometimes. The world and, just doesn't hear, does it? Yeah, and it, sometimes we don't hear either. We think, you know, um, sometimes we leave it as the last res, result is, is Jesus, you know, the last option is Jesus, but it should be the first one where the rest is and where, where you know, where the refreshing is and so forth. So. Mm. It's interesting. I mean, as you, as you alluded to at the beginning with your father when you received the Holy Spirit, up until that point it was, you know, his approach was about, you know, about him not receiving the Holy Spirit and that when he finally gave over to God, you know, he was filled. And it's the same with most circumstances in our lives where we, you're right, we've got plan A, then plan B, then plan C, and eventually when nothing works we, we call out to God and guess what, miraculously he, you know, he, deals, he, he deals with us and he sorts things out for us. And that's exactly what that scripture is saying. Yeah, that's cool. cool. Good. Thanks, man, for sharing. That's all right. Not a problem. Thanks for coming over. That's okay. It's always good to hang out. The coffee was good. The coffee is good. The cake was good. What about, what about the company? Is the company uh, all right? The co- Emily's a wonderful woman. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, on that note, we're going to uh, wrap it up. Thanks, Ryan. No worries. We might see you again. I think uh, you've agreed to uh, be a guest host. Maybe. Yeah, I think that was a yes. Yes. Thanks, mate. Stay thanks tuned. for sharing. Cheers. All right. All right. Well, thanks, uh, thanks listeners, for, uh, for hanging around for that one. Uh, to not miss any episodes, make sure that you subscribe to our podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or iTunes or on TuneIn or Podbean or some of the other podcast apps that are out there. Or you can find us on www.revivalontheairtoday.com. All of our episodes, this one plus the others before it, uh, are on there. Plus there's links to the podcast apps and to our fellowship websites. Don't forget to review and rate us so we can get the word out there. Thanks for those uh, international listeners who've tuned in. And uh, thanks for listening. And until next time, God bless.